The San Jose Sharks blow yet another lead, but take one step closer to securing the best odds heading into the draft lottery. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen, probably part of the Locked on Network. We cover your team every day. And if you want to be an everyday, all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts or you can watch on YouTube as well. And the Sharks, um, yeah, they did it again, blowing another two-goal lead. but taking one step closer to securing the best odds um, in the draft lottery and hopefully, hopefully getting Mac on Celebrity. So we're going to be talking about uh, the Sharks blowing another lead. If 20 goals is realistic, a potential for William Eklund, uh, dig into the numbers of this game and then discuss the power play. And if it's better or worse than last year, um, and kind of some of the numbers behind the power play. So, before we get into all that, I do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. And again, another another blown lead as the Sharks lose three to two in overtime to the Calgary Flames. Um, and entertaining game, which is again, that's all we ask for right now is. Crack up the losses. Does William Eklund score? Did you lose? Check. Did William Eklund score? Check. Um, and was the game at least entertaining? Check. So check, check, check on this, this game here. But um, again, the Sharks just do not have the firepower to play a full 60 minutes. If games are 20 minutes long, this team would be a playoff team because um, they can play for 20 minutes at a time. Maybe on a good night, you might get 40 minutes. But um no the sharks just fell apart in this game and was when we dig into the numbers of this game just severely outshot as the game progressed further and further um and to the point where the sharks didn't get a shot on goal until about five minutes left in the third period so the big thing is though where does this leave the sharks for the old tankathon um the sharks right now currently uh sit there so they did get a point tonight um there is now a six points between them in chicago with the sharks having four games to play so basically um the sharks would have to secure six out of the possible eight points um to catch chicago so things are looking very good at this point chicago does have a game in hand here so um and i think they kind of alternate days right now where i, I think chicago plays tomorrow um so chicago schedule really quickly so yeah they do play uh wednesday against the blues this is definitely their easiest game left as the blues are hanging on to uh life to to make the playoffs but they're basically done they played nashville who's in the playoffs they play uh, on friday sunday they play carolina who's in the playoffs tuesday they play at vegas and then they play la all these teams are playoff teams with the exception of the blues so um we'll kind of be going back and forth with those games until the very last game but by then the sharks should hopefully have things kind of uh cleaned up here or at least secured here so um the one draft related um columbus has secured their spot they are fourth they can't move up they can't move down they will have the fourth best odds um going into the draft lottery that's where uh, the sharks sat last year so they're going to be in that spot um, this year. It's really fun. They're kind of like on an island. It's like Anaheim has 57 points. Columbus has 64. Arizona has 71. They're all by themselves there. So, um, but yeah, one step closer um, to securing these odds. So um, that's all we can ask for at this point. So, um, but I think another takeaway here is uh, William Eklund. 
and scoring his 16th goal of the season. Um, outside chance, outside chance to get to 20 this year, uh, would need four goals in the last four games here. Not saying he can't, um, and he has been scoring more proficiently, but, um, you know, you, the way Eklund has come on here at the end of the season, like, you know, there's, I don't think Eklund's ever going to be like a 40 goal guy, but I mean, if he's a 20 goal guy on this type of team, with some of the talent that's around him. Um, and yes, I know he's a lot of this has been power play. You know, he, he's definitely the trigger man on the power play. And you saw that again tonight as you know, a lot of the sh power play movement was to try to get Eklund those one-time shots, which he's very good at, um, but just did not, was not kind of able to get it tonight. But the goal he scored tonight r reminded me of two goals, actually one goal, one or not goals, but two other Eklund opportunities. And if you think back way, way, way back to Eklund's very first nine games at the year he was drafted, right? That 2021, you know, the Eki, like he had a very similar situation where he's kind of on a mini breakaway um, and is just unable to kind of get the puck off up over the pads, right? And you're like, oh man, if Eklund did it right there, right? And boom. Go back to last year. Eklund gets called up, you know, after the trade deadline. He gets an opportunity against the Blues all by himself, mini breakaway. Uh, and I retweeted this one today, if you, you know, um, where he kind of the same spot, boom, 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 you know, kind of does this kind of the same move. Um, unable to, I can't remember if it was Biddington or not, or whoever the, the Blues call it, but boom, can't get that first inch goal tonight. Gets the same opportunity, and he goes high glove side on Wolf, which seems to be the Wolf's kind of weak spot right now. Um, but finally gets that opportunity, is able to, to, to cash it in. Great passing uh, between the on the Lund line there. We'll talk about the Lund line here more in a little bit, but um, you just see these little step, these little learning moments that he's had, taking things that he learned. Um, you know, whether it's in his NHL experience and his AHL experience and kind of adding that to that repertoire. And I think there's a like legitimate when like Eklund's peak year to look at a potential 35 goal score, um, which again, we knew the passing, we knew the assists, we knew the playmaking, uh, but a lot of people were very worried about William Eklund if his inability to score goals, especially with his is um, in the SHL. I think we can put those uh, to rest with the way he, he has played. I think he's worked very hard on his shot, um, and there's a very, very there's a world where Eklund is a you know 30, 35 goal scorer for the Sharks for years to come, especially again when the infusion of talent that you're hoping is uh, uh, coming soon, um, there's, there's a lot about going to be a lot more opportunities for uh, Eklund to have better, um, you know, better line mates, better scoring opportunities, better the, just this team being a lot better team. But um, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's getting there guys. Like you can see Eklund putting all the pieces together um i am i i can see it it is it's coming guys it's coming um so very exciting for for Eklund as he continues to his development um very exciting for the tank development as we get uh one step closer um to hopefully getting that 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 blue chip jewel that just to add and make everything fit right where it's supposed to fit. So uh, we'll dig into the numbers of this game, uh, talk about the one line, and then we're going to discuss the power play. Uh, look back at the 2022-23 uh, power play and look at the 23-24 power play and kind of see what the difference is between the two units. So we'll get to that here uh, in just one second. If you are looking to hire, wouldn't it be great to have it just like your fantasy team where you could just handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. 
Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. If you hate waiting because who likes waiting, Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. So join more than 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. Indeed knows you're growing your own business. You have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application. Pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire. You need Indeed. All right, uh, let's dig into the numbers behind this game. Um, the three to two overtime loss and uh, the disappointing from the Sharks power play. I thought the Sharks power play was going to have an opportunity tonight. Um, going 0 for 4 um, against a good, good Calgary uh, power play unit, was ranked 10th. Um, but had some opportunities, just was not able to cash in. Um, I think that the power play they had in the third period was probably their best. Not the one at the end of the game, but the one in kind of the beginning of the third or middle of the third period was their best looking one, but they just couldn't cash in. But five on five play continues to hamper the Sharks um, as they just cannot generate offense. And you'll see as we kind of go through this game, just how Calgary really put the clamps on the Sharks and then took control of this game. So uh, 49-18 of 5v5. Shot attempts were 68-31 to 31 in favor of Calgary, 68.69 to 31.31. Corsi 4. Actual shots was 30-18, to 18. again, all at 5v5. Scoring chances, 35-15. to 15. 15 to 7 high danger chances, 3.19 to 1.2 expected goals for all in favor of the Flames. And again, the third period where the Sharks just could not do anything at 5v5. Um, you had, even in the second period, second period, 22 to 10 shot attempts in favor of the Flames, 25 to 10 in the third period. Um, scoring chances 13 to 7 in the second period, 16 to 3 in the third period, all in favor of the Flames. 1.73 to 0.67 expected goals for in favor of the flames and the flames in the second period, and then 0.9 to 0.12 expected goals for uh, in favor of the flames in the third period. So the sharks basically got shut down offensively in the, the third, the, the second and third period. A um, little bit of a slow start from the sharks, but they kind of found their groove in the beginning, you know, halfway through the first period. And, um, again, that Eklund goal was a really nice kind of play with, between the lungs uh, there, but like, just inability to create sustained offense in this game. Um, and that has been the sharks, you know, that has been their Achilles heel all season. Well, one of their many Achilles heels all season long, but the offense, I think this year is it has to be one of the biggest disappointments and, We'll discuss that as we get into the off season here. So um, as for the forward lines, so uh, we had the Lund line with Lund, uh, William, Mikkel, and Fabian. Uh, so Eklund, Granlund, Zetterlund. They played 12-43, um, 5v5. 11 shot attempts, 4-15 allowed. Actual shots was 6-6. Six six. Did have the one goal uh, from them, so... As we have seen, you know, that line continues to produce offense. 0. 0.4 to 0. 0.98 expected goals for. So um, while they did create offense, they were also uh, had trouble defensively. Five to eight scoring chances, three to four high danger chances um, for that line. Caution, uh, Cunning, and Graf played 11 37, four to 16 shot attempts. Uh, two to six actual shots uh, did give up a goal. 0.08 to 0.61 expected goals for three to eight scoring chances, zero to two high danger chances for that line. Um, I will say with Graf, I did like his what kind of some of the stuff we saw from him tonight. Uh, made a really nice play with uh, Justin Bailey. 
I think it was kind of a bit of a, a line change there where uh, Graf gets the puck behind the net, um, kind of goes to a nice little soft, and he sees Bailey just kind of parked out front um, in front of Dustin Wolf. And Graf makes a really great pass. Uh, Bailey goes to jam it in, and just Dustin Wolf makes a great play there. So great, good play by Graf better play um, by Wolf, but you see a lot of the passing and like kind of the puck movement with him. I, I really like what I I'm seeing out of him so far. And I, um, as he's kind of getting acclimated, I do want to see him get a chance to kind of blast a one timer. Cause um, he did that very well at Quinnipiac. Um, that was kind of, he, that was his role, especially on the power play. Um, he does have a really heavy shot. I do want to see him get a chance to kind of, uh, unload one of the, those one timers here hopefully uh, at some point he has, is getting power play two opportunities um but again it's it's a, a power play one has been really they're really close to kind of connecting tonight but just unable to um and then we also saw the third line um of jacob mcdonald um who's had another goal tonight. Uh, great play by Mike Hoffman. Um, so we had McDonald, uh, Hoffman, Sturm. Um, that line, again, it's with McDonald playing as defenseman playing as a Ford, it's a little bit tough to kind of see what they, but um, Hoffman had f- uh, six, 26% Corsi, or sorry, 23% Corsi for Hoffman. McDonald, 26% Corfi and Corsi and Sturm had 23% Corsi. So uh, that line probably did not have a great night um, as well compared to the others. Um, and then the Bordeaux Studnika Bailey line, 855, nine for nine shots, four, nine allowed, four to five actual shots, um, 0.17 to 0.2 expected goals um, in favor of the Flames. So pretty close. Three to four scoring chances, one to one high danger chances. And um, I got to say, um, Bordeaux. He just every game there's like at least one sneaky play where he makes where it's just like, oh, how did he do that? And you're seeing Borlo just becoming more and more comfortable with his role and kind of where he fits on the team. Um, still needs to kind of work. I think use a lot of the sneaky plays kind of especially in his own defensive zone where he does a good job of kind of maybe stripping the puck away from someone but then he can't kind of finish the play and like get the puck out of the out of the zone or like he it's kind of that next building step of like all right i get the i get the puck away i need to either pass it or get it out of the zone and that's kind of that next step i think that's going to solidify him as an nhl player but you have to be really happy with the way Bordelow is playing. Um, he's playing a physical game. Like he was nose to the net tonight. Um, Nikita Hochuk, who, uh, of course, you know, former shark, big, big dude. Bordelow went, you know, kind of, you know, toe to toe with him, uh, you know, behind the net there. Um, again, I think Bordelow, he just, they talk about on the broadcast. He just looks better as an NHL player than he does as an AHL player. And I think it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, he's needs a big summer this year. And we'll talk about Bordeaux plenty this summer and where he fits in. Um, but I think, again, we can kind of put those concerns that we had about Bordeaux coming out of last year. And even this year in the AHL, we kind of put those to bed. So, um, yeah, he just kind of, I think he's really found his role and his his niche on the team and what he's supposed to do and again we'd love to see him play with you know some maybe some different people here at some point but again right now the sharks it's there's just not it's a very talent poor team right now so um as for mckenzie blackwood's night um he pull on sorry uh he uh, in all situations Stop 37 saves on 40 shots um, in about 63 minutes of play. Uh, three goals against, expected goals against was 3.89, 925 save percentage, uh, 12 high danger saves on 14 high danger shots, um, six mid danger on seven mid danger shots, and 16 for 16 on the low danger. So, uh, kind of back to a Mackenzie Blackwood performance that we have seen from him, especially with all those high danger shots. Um, and he played, he, some amazing saves tonight. He also got really lucky where there was about there's two goals, two should have been goals, uh, where this game could have been four to two easily. Um, where some rebounds, some passes kind of went through. There's a pass that went right through his legs. Um, he was kind of on one side of the crease, goes right through the, the crease, and 
two flames just kind of collide and the puck just kind of squirts out. Um, you know, and then there was another one where a kind of a rebound and off to this very bad angle shot, but you've seen guys kind of score from there. Um, could have very much been a four to two type of game, but also Nico Sturm had a breakaway that scored it through uh, Dustin Wolf's legs. And you, we could have been talking about how Nico Sturm scored a goal and the Sharks win three to one type of, of performance as well. Um, so, yeah. That's how the Sharks continue to blow games. Uh, they play well for 20 minutes, and then they kind of are just unable to to find that next gear um, in the third period. So um, that's going to do it for this game. We're going to talk about the power play here in a minute and kind of look at the last year's unit compared to this year's unit, um, why this year's unit is ranked higher um, than it was last year and why it's kind of been more efficient. So we'll talk about that here. Uh, in just one minute. If you're looking to get tickets for maybe you want to go to a major league baseball game, you want to go catch the Giants, you want to go catch the A's, maybe you want to go to the last Sharks game on Saturday, you need to check out Game Time. Uh, they have killer last minute deals, all in pricing, views from your seat, and the lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets um, the thing i love about it is you can see your seats before you go um, not that like going to oracle there's a bad seat in that park but if you know you want to see where you're going to sit maybe you want to make sure you go to a sunday afternoon game you see a nice view of the bay you want to you know um do that they've got you covered over there also, the only th the other thing I really love is you know exactly what you're going to pay with their all-in pricing. You're not going to go to checkout and get slammed with a bunch of fees. They've got you covered with that. You know exactly what you're going to pay when you go to checkout. No uh, surprises there. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again. Create an account and redeem code locked on NHL, L O C K E D O N NHL for $20 off. Down the game time app, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. Um, so, heading into this game, not including tonight's stats, the Sharks' power play was actually ranked 17th um, in the NHL. At a 20.9% uh, success rate, which was way better than last year's unit. So I was curious, why is this? And so I wanted to kind of compare what the Sharks power play looked like last year compared to what it looks like this year. And um, it's kind of funny. So pulling up, if you're watching on YouTube, have some fun, some slides, graphics, all that fun stuff. Um, last year, the five players who played the most power play time for the Sharks, uh, Eric Carlson, pretty good, not here anymore. He played 277 minutes. Logan Couture, um, RIP, played 242 minutes. Tomas Hurdle, 239 minutes. Alexander Barabanov and Timo Meyer. So these were the five players who played the most power play time for the Sharks last year. Um, it's kind of crazy. How, like Carlson's not here. Hurdle's not here. Meyer's not here. Bear Banov is not going to be here anymore. And then Logan Gator is we murky future, right? So the 22-23 unit ranked 25th at an 18.4% um, you know, success rate. They had 223 power play opportunities. So that's anytime they went on the man advantage, whether it's five on four, four on three, whatever that is. All situations power play. Um, their Corsi four during that time, so their shot attempts eighty four point six six. So they, again, you're not going to take one hundred percent of the shots, but you want to be in the eighty high eighties nineties. You know you're dominating the play. Expected goals for forty seven point three nine. Expected goals for um, actual goals for forty one. So the power play should have had almost you know forty seven goals. They scored forty one last year. Um, had 146 high danger chances, 347 scoring chances, and their shooting percentage was 12.28. So keep that number in mind right there. This year's unit, 
Um, so William Eklund, again, this is before tonight's game. Uh, he has the most power play time, 199 minutes. Um, Mikhail Granlin, 188 minutes. Remember, he missed about nine games at the beginning of the season. Zettelin, who's played every game, 186 minutes. Uh, Hurdle, who's not here anymore, uh, 141 minutes. And then Kalen Addison had 116 minutes. So, again, nobody is – like, we knew – that that unit right like maybe it would have been bear banoff kind of sneak out or like they kind of you know that role or after timo meyer left they you know kind of trying to figure out that spot it kind of Eklund jumped in there but much more fluid this year right uh with, with the sharks power play unit trying to kind of find and this has been kind of the group for a while right is the lunds and it's been bordolo now but it's been usually the lunds a defenseman and then that other piece so this year, ranked 17th, 20.9% again, before tonight. Um, 196 opportunities, so way less opportunities. Corsi 4, 81.77. Expected goals for 38.91, so basically 39 goals. Goals for 41. So they've scored the same amount of goals this year and a couple less games than they did all of last year. High danger chances, 115. Scoring chances, 282. Shooting percentage, 17.3%. So this power play has been less effective this year. And you see that, right? Watching the power play, just how often sometimes they struggle to get into their own zone. Um, right. Like it, it's, it's, or how, well, especially at the beginning of the year when they were doing, running the five forward unit, um, like there was definitely it's bumps and bruises and growing pains. And I think, we've seen a much better power play unit at the end of the season here, especially the, the kind of the current iteration, whether it's Duran or Addison on the back end, but kind of the, the lines with Bordolo, it's been a more effective unit. Um, but the shooting percentage is the, the story of why, why it's been a better unit. Um, last year's shooting percentage was one of the worst um, in, in the NHL on the power play um let me pull it up here right now but this year's is like one of literally one of the best um i think it ranks third uh this year's ranks third overall shooting percentage on the power play um so a little wor worrisome going forward um if this is a sustainable thing if this team is going to continue to shoot 17% on the power play. Um, so yeah, they are uh even so after tonight, they're at 17.08. They're still third in the league. They're behind Tampa, Carolina, um, when it comes to shooting percentage on the power play. Last year's team, I'm pulling this up right now. Um, they ranked um their shooting percentage was um, Two one zero nine eight seven six five twenty fifth best shooting percentage. So that jump from twenty five best to third best is that is the reason why this power play has been better this year. So they scored the same amount of goals on way less opportunities. Um, so they've been more effective because their shooting percentage. So um, again, looking at the guys, right? Like Timo Meyer, volume shooter. We know what hurdle was. Eric Carlson had like a insane year last year, but didn't score a lot on the power play. Um, so I think though there is opportunity for the the like next year the power, the shooting percentage is definitely going to take a step back, right? I think that's just an unsustainable number for what this team is. But I think added talent um, where it's not going to be as efficient, but I think it can still be as effective. And I think it can be more sustainable next year where you're having added talent that can kind of provide more threats to it. And again, you're not going to shoot 17% next year on, on the power play. Um, but if you have more chances um, and kind of just more effective players on it uh, and a real second unit, um, I think, again, the power play has a chance to kind of continue to grow as we've seen the past couple seasons with under David Quinn um but again i don't i think the shooting percentages is, is boosting up the underlying numbers for the sharks right now and um kind of a, the reason why their their 
power play is so good. Um, at 5v5 this year, again, like the Sharks have one of the worst shooting numbers. Um, I'm pulling it up right now uh, when it comes to that, like just to kind of show how how much the 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 power play is kind of boosting the Sharks. So the Canucks have the best shooting percentage this year at 10.66. Um, the Sharks shooting percentage is at 6.99. So they're shooting almost like, um two and a half times better on the power play than they are on even streak which makes sense right you're going to shoot better but um again shooting percentage 5v5 should get better next year hopefully with better players um numbers wise but i think the power play is definitely going to kind of take a hit um because i just don't think that's a sustainable number for the talent on this team so um we'll be back tomorrow to talk about uh kind of what to root for um so we're gonna look at guy kind of we're gonna look at the tank what we need from from other teams and then we're gonna look at some personal milestones for the guys and what we're kind of rooting for her here in the last four games so make sure you guys are following along wherever you get podcasts and of course you can watch on youtube as well you can follow the show on twitter facebook and instagram at locked on sharks follow me on twitter at my fry hole until tomorrow bye friends <laughs>